Hi there. Um, this video is going to talk about the content that's in labs 4C and 4D. In unit 4, you cover two main topics, one being radicals, the other being rationals. And there's equations and expressions and whatnot thrown in. And the terminology is important because it's going to help your brain figure out what you're supposed to be doing, what your answer should look like, and, and what your goal is, I guess, in the long run. So I've got a blank page down here at the end that I want to start on, first of all. <clears throat> As you know, the radical equations had roots in them. Rational expressions have to do with ratios. In other words, everybody's favorite thing in math, fractions. Rational expressions are expressions that have fractions in them. In order to be able to do labs 4C and 4D well, you have to remember all of the basics to do with, with fractions. Lab 4C is everything to do with multiplying, dividing, and simplifying rational expressions. Just like fractions, Every time you're working with a rational expression and you're done and you get to that final answer, you you have to make sure that you've reduced it. It has to be in lowest terms to get full marks. That said, let's think about multiplying, dividing, and then we'll hit simplifying with our answers. If I give you a fraction like two thirds times four fifths, we know that when we multiply fractions, we just go straight across. We go two times four is eight and three times five is 15. It's that simple. Then in order to determine whether a fraction is in lowest terms or not, we ask ourselves typically, does anything divide into both? And that's because the thing that we cancel or divide out are common factors. Now you've been working with factoring uh, in this course and in other in the previous course in the grade 10 level. So you're not surprised when you, you see these expressions, this algebra stuff coming, that we're going to be factoring again. And we're going to be factoring for two reasons. We're going to factor in order to reduce, and we're going to factor in order to um, get common denominators uh, as we're going. So let's do an, uh, a second one. I'm going to start with two thirds again and say, what if I go two thirds times five over six? Again, straight across. Now, most of us would write 10 over 18, and then we would go, what goes into both? Well, two, so I could divide by two, and I would end up with five over nine. However, understand that really what this is doing is that 10 is two times five. That 18 is two times nine. So if we go ahead and cancel common factors, we end up with a reduced fraction. That's going to be important when we get to working with the algebra part of it. So multiplying is the easiest because it's just go straight across, do what you got to do. When we get to dividing, if I had two thirds divided by four fifths, we do something called multiply by the reciprocal. So the two thirds doesn't change, but instead of dividing by four fifths, we multiply by the reciprocal of four fifths, which just means we flip it over. Technically a reciprocal is one over. If I have four fifths, if I put one over four fifths, it becomes five fourths. Then we go straight across because now we're multiplying 10 over 12, which is really two times five over two times six, cancel the common factors, and we know that's five sixths. Those basics have to be in place to do well with Math Lab 4C. Now, when you go to work with a rational expression, because if you look at this, that looks a heck of a lot different than that two thirds we were just looking at. But the process is not different. In order to do these though efficiently, the first thing I want you to do is factor everything you can factor. Factor, factor, factor. So you're going to put an equal sign. You're going to look at the top of this and go, um, 
what in the world factors there? Is it a trinomial? Is it a difference of squares? This is actually a common factor. And you're going to take out that common factor and see what's left. On the bottom, again, there's only two terms, so it's it's either a difference of squares or a common factor. It's a common factor question again. The 5x is going to come out and it's going to leave an x plus 1. Remember, you can always check factoring by multiplying it back in and seeing if you get back where you started. Okay? If something is checkable in math, it's silly to ever get it wrong because you can always check and make sure that it's right. Now we have three factors in the top. I have a 10, I have an x, and I have an x plus 7. I have three factors in the bottom. I have a 5, an x, and an x plus 1. And we can only cancel if the whole factor cancels, or if the whole factor is in both the top and the bottom. So this, this x, for instance, that's not a factor. That's part of a factor. We can't cancel it. This x, however, there's a good cross out. This x and this x, those cancel. Those go away, no problem. 10 over 5, you reduce the same way you've always reduced fractions. And the x plus 7 and the x plus 1 are going to be left sitting there. Now there's another catch here to what's going on. And that's these non-permissible values. So step one is factor. Then what I would do next, because I sometimes get a little messy when I cross things out, is I do my non-permissible values. When we worked with radicals, we were talking about negatives under even roots. When we're working with rational expressions, we're talking about a number over a number, right? Yes, there's variables and letters and things, but it, set, it comes down to a number over a number. And the bottom of a fraction can never, ever, ever be zero. We do not have a defined value for uh, something over zero. So when we go to do non-permissible values, very much like the restrictions we did in radicals, non-permissible values are the things that would make the bottom zero. Five can't be zero. It's not going to give us a non-permissible value. X. This X cannot be zero. This has an x in it as well. x plus 1 cannot be zero. This isn't done, however. Don't leave it like that. Get the x by itself by subtracting the 1. There's your non-permissible values. So when your final answer, when you're ready to, to write it, I'm going to tidy that up now that I doodled all over it. When you're all done, you're going to have this simplified. And then you're going to include x can't be 0 or negative 1 as your non-permissible values. So factor, find your non-permissibles, cancel common factors, meaning reduce. That's your process for um, all of lab 4C, really. But especially for the simplify ones, that's what you're always going to do. When you get to the multiplying, that's just trying to scare us. Really, we have 5x squared over x minus 3. And since we're going to go straight across, make that line longer, I'm going to go times x minus 3 up here and times 10x. <coughs> now it's factored. Reduce your common factors. Find your non-permissibles, and you'll have your answer. Same thing with this one, because it's straight across. Non-permissibles. Oops. Come out of any factor with a variable. That is or was in the denominator. Now, why do I say is or was? Because when we get to the division right now, and these are the same, so this kind of a, a lazy example, bottom, bottom. There might be two non-permissibles there, depending on the question, because those two things are in the bottom right now. When I change this to multiplication, what was on the bottom becomes the top because I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. Now this 2x plus 4 is now in the bottom. So when I go to do my non-permissibles, is in the bottom, and this will end up in the bottom. Right? Is in the bottom, 
was in the bottom. I have to think about all of those for my non-permissibles. But again, this one's already factored. Cancel your common factors, list your non-permissibles. That's all you're going to be doing for lab 4C. Over and over and over. When you get to ones with two operations, if you think about bed mass, technically division and multiplication are done in the same step but going left to right. Leave this one alone, times, flip this one over, times, and this one stays the same way. And then factor everything that factors, start, uh, get all your non-permissibles, remembering that this was in the bottom at the start, right? Because you're going to have non-permissibles from all of the factors in the bottom. Don't forget to get one from that x plus 10 as well. And then you're going to do... Um, this one's easy, stays the same, flip, flip, because we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, multiply by the reciprocal, okay? I will make a second video for 4D.